This treatment of Taylor started when she was um, in association with Timothy Chalamet. Of course, part of it is racism because they, I'm sure they don't want to see a clean white guy with a black girl, which is really pathetic and sad. But also part of it is just um, typical misogyny because they're obsessed with him and they don't want him to be in a relationship with any woman. So um, they spread a bunch of lies about Taylor on like Tumblr and different little sites. They had like a really vicious account on Reddit where they spread these baseless abject lies on Taylor. It doesn't take two brain cells to read the lies and see that they're completely baseless and wrong. But these lies became a vehicle for really pathetic people who are obsessed with Harry to, to latch onto them and pretend that there's some kind of special intel from some kind of credible source, and they're not. Thank you so much for joining me. This is a little unorthodox. I guess it's kind of like the old Q&A videos I used to do. I just wanted to come on and talk about some random things because the internet is really boring. Have you noticed that lately? So um, I just wanted to broaden my horizons online and just try to have different discussions. I just wanted to unload a bunch of thoughts I've had about a bunch of different subjects. So here we go. The first topic is, did Harry Styles and Taylor Russell break up? First of all, can I just say I adore them. I adore them so much. This is like his first relationship that I really highly support because I see I feel like they're kindred spirits. I feel like they're both really artistic. They're very offline. Um, they're both very unassuming, but also incredible head turning individuals. They're both really humble. And she just seems really sweet and um, she seems really driven, but at the same time, she doesn't seem very arrogant or very self-seeking or very opportunistic. For some reason, like from the moment they got together, people were hating on them. And you know, it's just a small subset of deranged people, mostly shippers. And there may be a few haters from um, Harry's fandom in general who are, who are obsessed with him and his dating life and I guess they want to sleep with him themselves so they hate everyone he dates. They will dig up something on every single person. It doesn't matter if he dated Mother Teresa. They would find reasons to hate on her and it's a very weird culture in Harry's fandom that I just don't understand. The obsession with who he dates as well as the hatred towards all the women he dates. These people want him to be single for the rest of his life it seems or the shippers want him to be with a particular person that he probably has zero to do with anymore. I only focused in on Harry's love life and my content because it was an untold story. And, and it was it was a story that he was putting out there that literally no one was picking up on except a few Zeri shippers. But in my opinion, they just weren't doing a thorough enough job of it. That's where I came along and became really assertive with the information and started digging up things that even those Zeri shippers weren't finding or I expounded on the things that they found. But it was never because I was obsessed with Harry or obsessed with who he was dating. I consider myself a truth seeker. So no matter where the truth leads, I will follow. If that truth leads me to believe that he is in a relationship with one of his bandmates, that's where I will go. If that truth leads me to believe that bandmate was not so kind to him, that's where I'm gonna go. I have never been a shipper, but these shippers hate everyone he dates if it's not the person they want him to be with. And that includes Larry's, that includes Zary's, and that includes Nary's, that includes Bradiri's or however the hell you pronounce Brad and Harry together. Even Brad and Harry shippers are hating on Harry's relationship with Taylor. And I find that so bizarre because and they're kind of vilifying Taylor, which is fucking insane because she is one of the sweetest celebrities I have ever seen. She is one of the most inoffensive celebrities. I would even say Harry is more offensive than Taylor in some ways because of his problematic ties with Olivia Wilde and some of the problematic things he and his team did with regard to his fans and their ticket sales. But for Taylor, you can't dig up one thing on her to say she's been problematic or that she's a nasty person or that she's mean or rude. So what some of these deranged shippers are doing is completely making up lies. 
And this treatment of Taylor started when she was um, in association with Timothy Chalamet. Of course, part of it is racism because they, I'm sure they don't want to see a clean white guy with a black girl, which is really pathetic and sad. But also part of it is just um, typical misogyny because they're obsessed with him and they don't want him to be in a relationship with any woman. So um, they spread a bunch of lies about Taylor on like Tumblr and different little sites. They had like a really vicious account on Reddit where they spread these baseless abject lies on Taylor. It doesn't take two brain cells to read the lies and see that they're completely baseless and wrong. But these lies became a vehicle for really pathetic people who are obsessed with Harry to, to latch onto them and pretend that there's some kind of special intel from some kind of credible source, and they're not. Worse yet, there are pathetic people who run update accounts for Harry, pretending to be in the know and pretending to be, and pretending to have connections in Hollywood. And they're pretending that they knew her and that she was an awful, rude person. And they're festering this hate for this girl online is really fucked up and sad. The funny part is all they're doing is exposing how deranged and unhinged they are. And the people who listen to those lies and accept those lies and use those lies as a vehicle to hate on her are just exposing themselves. These are bitter, lonely, self-loathing people who have nothing going on in their lives, who don't know what love is, who are lonely, who sit around and make up imaginary jobs for themselves, pretending to be PR, or they sit around obsessively stalking everything Harry does. They comment on his clothing. They get angry when his clothing doesn't match the weather because they think they're being lied to for some reason. They think everything to do with Harry is a conspiracy theory is very strange. I, I don't know where these people come from. And I hate that I was ever adjacent to them in the least. And some of these people uh, use my content when I was like calling out Olivia Wilde on different things that she was factually doing. Those same people are trying to demonize uh, Taylor as Olivia 2.0, and that's complete bullshit. There are no facts to back that up. Olivia was a proven liar who was affiliated with multiple predators who broke up her family for clout and who said and did many absurd and ridiculous things that deserve to be criticized. And Harry deserved to be criticized for platforming a person like her. But with Taylor, there's just nothing. She's a sweet girl. She goes to work. She does her job. She loves her job. And she's very sweet and polite and cordial to everyone who encounters her. And then she just also happens to be dating Harry Styles. And for that reason, she deserves to be hated on and spoken down about and demeaned. It's really disgusting. But I have a feeling Harry and Taylor will prevail. So when the rumors started that they broke up, they were all based on a Sun article. Now there's a distinction in Sun's reporting that needs to be pointed out. Some of the Sun's reporting in a certain quarter of their media house, some of the reporting is credible and it is based on facts. And they usually provide those facts in their articles, which is why you see some celebs do interviews with them like Louis Tomlinson. And some of their articles are very credible. Like when they were covering Harry going to court for his stalker, but they do have like a tabloidy section of their media house and it's like an entertainment news and they lie a lot or they interview witnesses who are not credible. They've done this with Zayn a couple of times. One time their witness was really credible because she had pictures of him in bed um, and it was one of his cheating scandals. But another time he had like a massage therapist and she had pictures in his house and they tried to build up a story to say he slept with her. But the problem with that is there was no credible proof that he slept with her. It was just, it easily could have been just a massage therapist who crossed the line and took pictures in his house to fake a story. So that part of the sun lies a ton. They lied a ton about Harry and Olivia too. It's kind of like the Daily Mail. They do the same thing. A lot of their articles are credible. Some of their reporting is quite credible and is backed by facts, but some of their reporting is pathetic. And it usually involves celebrities. They make up stories. Like when they photoshopped Olivia and Harry going to the gym together, it was completely bizarre. So, um, there was an article in The Sun that said Harry and Taylor were possibly on shaky ground because when she got to the UK, she stayed in a hotel and she didn't stay with him. That's completely stupid for many reasons. The first reason being she lives in the UK. She said in multiple interviews recently that the UK is home. London is home. So she's not visiting the UK when she comes to the UK. She's returning home. So that is her home base. I'm sure she has her own apartment or house. So the idea that she was staying in a hotel is probably false unless she was staying in a hotel 
for a certain event, but for them to characterize it as her staying in a hotel because she didn't want to be around Harry is just completely baseless. And then on top of that, um, they ended up deleting the article, which is hilarious. So they were either reached out to by Harry's team or by Taylor's team or whoever they got to lie to them about this hotel stay probably retracted the statement because hours after they uploaded that article that multiple other tabloidy publications picked up, they deleted it. So now when you read the few articles that suggest that Harry and Taylor might have broken up, they all link to that original Sun article, which is no longer in existence. So I think that says a lot about the credibility of the information that The Sun received originally. I believe it was totally false. And then thankfully the other day, we actually got a candid photo of Taylor and Harry in Italy. So not only are they not broken up, but they're traveling together still because we know they traveled to Canada together, then they traveled to the US together, and now they're in Italy. So I think they're in pretty deep. I think they're settled in. I think they really like each other. I think they're really digging each other. They would have to be because They've been dating since June that we know of. They could have been dating before June. They've been traveling the world together ever since. And um, they're very low key. Like this is his most low key relationship. It's kind of on par with his relationship with Camille. But um, in my opinion, Camille was a very easy to spot PR relationship. And I broke that down in multiple other videos based on what he was going through at the time um, being closeted. From all the available evidence, I think Harry and Taylor are real. And I think that because not only are they adorable together, not only are they low key, and not only is there no purpose for them to be a PR relationship, I'm telling you, he's in a different place. I, I know it sounds weird. I know we don't know him. I know our parasocial relationships with him are kind of absurd, but I feel like Harry is in a different place than he's been in a very long time actually than he's ever been because I think he was preoccupied emotionally by a relationship since he was 17 years old. And I think this is the first time he has ever been so liberated by that relationship that he could be in an authentic relationship with someone else. I do believe at times he tried to be in relationships with other people. And I do believe at times he failed um, in those relationships, but not for lack of trying. I do believe he tried to be with certain people and tried to make them real, but it was always in the back of his mind, in the back of his heart, this uh, kind of abusive, oppressive relationship he was in behind the scenes with another man. And so I'm not going to speculate on which of his relationships were real and which were fake, because I've always said I don't really like saying relationships are fake or real. Uh, just like I said with Zigi, I, I never really just said they were fake. I said they were PR driven, which is a difference than just saying they're fake and that they're PR. Um, I broke it down in my Zigi PR video, the difference between saying something is fake and saying something is PR driven because they can have authentic experiences with one another. They can have a relationship that they both believe is authentic, but by virtue of the fact that he's closeted, and she doesn't know he's closeted or she knows and she's okay with it. Those type of things are mitigating factors that would undermine the authenticity of the relationship or undermine the authenticity of the love he could possibly feel for a woman because he was dealing with a man behind the scenes who he seemed to have an obsessive love for. And I brought down all of that evidence, but now I do believe this is his opportunity to have his most authentic relationship because I do believe while he may be battling some old feelings for that particular man that was in his life, I do feel like he is trying harder than ever to be with another person and he's keeping it very private, very low key, and they seem very adult and very real and I'm rooting for them. And so, um, no, I don't believe they're fake. I think this is his most authentic relationship. And um, I think it has a far better chance of surviving than any other relationship he has had. Even if he has had authentic feelings for other girls in the past, I think this one has the most chance of surviving. And speaking of Harold, uh, he shaved his head. It's so bizarre. It is strange. And as someone who was at one point obsessed with trying to figure him out, I am no longer obsessed with trying to figure Harry Styles out. I just enjoy him for what he is. But I used to be really obsessed with like analyzing him and analyzing his music and his choices because he's the one who got me into content creation. And so um, as someone who used to be that way, I am intrigued by the head shave. I do wonder what prompted it. These are those moments you wish you could just speak to him and hear him talk and hear him 
admit things and confess. And it's just like, sometimes I just want to pick his brain. So I do wonder what made him shave his head. It was such a dramatic choice. He has never done anything even remotely like this. And so it, it does make you wonder if it was for a movie role or was it emotionally driven? Based on what we know of Harry and what we've seen of Harry, I cannot for the life of me just accept the fact that it was something he did randomly just for a change up. I don't believe that. I think a lot of what Harry does is very personal. It's very deeply personal. I think he's a very sensitive person and I think he makes a lot of choices based on his emotions. So I would be interested to know what was the reason behind the head shave. And if it was like for a fresh start or to get rid of his past completely, I think that's beautiful. I think it's incredibly symbolic and I support it wholeheartedly. Um, even though I miss his curls, um, I think it's, I think it was a powerful move and I support it. And I just want to see if it's growing back now, I wonder if it's sticking straight up or is he like brushing it or slicking it back? <laughs> I'm used to guys having low haircuts because I'm black. So all my brothers and all the guys I dated had, you know, low haircuts for the most part. Only one had like long hair. So um, low haircuts or buzz cuts are for me um, are pretty normal. But with Harry, he's always had this luscious hair and I just really need to see what it looks like as it grows. And I wonder if he had any regret as soon as he did it. Was it a bet? That would be hilarious if it turns out that it was a bet. The reason he shaved his hair. So um, I guess time will tell. Someone in the question box just answered Zary when I asked for topics to discuss. So this is kind of vague. I have no idea what the lovely person wants me to say. You know, my time with Zary was crazy. It was very unexpected. When I made the first video, I just needed a place to express my opinions and my thoughts. This is how it all started out because discovering Zary was so mind blowing and magical. It was like discovering a secret that was just out in the open that no one seemed to be picking up on except the other shippers that were you know kind of into it at the time there weren't that many zeri shippers there were a few major zeri accounts but um there weren't like obviously droves of zeri shippers i know i helped to make more zeri shippers i'm told that all the time i and a couple of other zeri accounts helped to bring about a renaissance in zeri and then i noticed <laughs> And then I noticed as my Zary channel picked up steam, a lot of the other channels disappeared. And I find that interesting and I don't know why, but anyway, they disappeared. I guess they weren't able to pick up on the things that were going on with Zary at the time. I don't know. I think I'm just able to see into things deeper than most people are. So I was able to create content out of thin air. Like right now, the internet feels extremely dead. Like. For me, Zary feels extremely dead. I don't see anything going on with them. I don't pick up on any clues between them, but I know I could come back and create Zary content out of thin air because I always have. Um, it's just the way my brain works. I can find things to talk about with any subject. So the main takeaway for me with Zary was learning content creation and then uh, Harry's plight. Harry's plight still pulls on my heart, although I've given up talking about it because it's just to no avail, it seems. Until he tells his story, I'm just going to be, you know, shouting alone in the wilderness to the same crowd of people who already know everything that I'm trying to tell them. So it was definitely time for me to move on, especially after I uncovered the Matilda connections, in my opinion, and just coming to see their relationship for what it really was, which was an abusive trauma bond. And I will never let up on that. And um, the evidence is there. So once I fully came to that realization, there was no going back for me, which is why in this world became what it became, which was a redemption novel for Harry's character to leave that trauma bond behind and to show how that trauma bond can be left behind and to show how people can heal from addiction, abuse, um, how people can be brought so low, but come back and go to such heights. And I think we saw that in Harry himself when it came to the release of Harry's house and how he confessed to the trauma he experienced and as it was, 
and how he just triumphed with that album and even won the most prestigious music award in the world for that album, which was album of the year at two major award shows. It was really important for me in that book to show his triumph over this obsession that he admits to that he's been dealing with since he was a teenager. Fine Line really deeply moved me and I know it's obvious that it did. And once I delved deep into Fine Line, it felt so eerie to the point where it felt like Harry was talking to us and it unnerved me so much and broke me so much on his behalf, especially 2020, that I just wasn't the same anymore. And my content reflected that at times. The end of Zary for me was Harry's triumph and I still would like to see him get justice ultimately. And I would still like to see him get his apology and to see his take accountability for what he did but I won't hold my breath to that end. So I'm gonna combine these next two topics because they're kind of similar. One was the question about aliens and the Christian perspective on aliens. And one was a question about ghosts and paranormal activity. Well, I will say right off the bat that I hate the subject of ghosts and I hate the subject of paranormal activity because I'm a chicken shit. And so I just don't like to talk about it because I, I don't believe in ghosts, but I do believe in like demons. Um, because I do believe in biblical teachings. So I don't like to talk about that stuff. I don't like to dwell on that stuff. I don't like to, um, I definitely don't um, believe in like manifesting. I know I joke about manifesting a lot, but it's just because I don't know what other word to substitute for manifesting when you kind of like speak something into existence. Um, but I don't manifest. I'm not a manifester. And I believe um, if there is any fruits to be gained from manifesting, that those rewards are not coming from a wholesome place. Let's just leave it at that. And so uh, as far as demons, uh, I do believe they pose as ghosts. My Christian teachings tells me that a lot of times it's bad entities inhabiting the memories of people we love to manipulate us. So that's really all I think about ghosts. I'm not big on ghost hunting. And like I said, I'm just too scared to watch any of that stuff anyway, because it creeps me out. And as far as aliens, aliens also creep me out. Aliens are terrifying, but also I do believe aliens are just demons. The word alien kind of evokes now due to our programming, it kind of evokes uh, mutants and like the little green men, but Alien just means foreign to our planet and extraterrestrial just means outside of the terrestrial. The terrestrial is Earth. Extraterrestrial beings, I believe, are from the spirit realm because we're taught there are multiple realms and that we inhabit a certain realm as humans. God inhabits a different realm and that's like the spirit realm. It's like a different dimension, basically. And so when Jesus was being persecuted and was heading to be executed, he was interrogated about this so-called kingdom he said he possesses. And I love this line. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. And I find that so powerful because it's so true, but it also made me view him as like an alien. And I'm like, oh, he is an alien. He He's not from this world. And so when I think of aliens, I think of the spirit realm. And so when it comes to like aliens flying around and being hyper intelligent and being way more advanced than us to the point where they're supernatural, I believe they're demons. I believe they're rogue spiritual beings. Like when you look into aliens and you look into some of the encounters that people have with aliens, the descriptions are very creepy. Like the aliens could read their minds or they had telekinesis and they're super advanced, such as I've heard stories about there being runways in like ancient uh, South America. So, and, and there being drawings, like cave drawings, depicting these beings that came down from beams. So I think that says a lot. And they're like time travelers almost. I do think they are beings visiting from the spirit realm. As far as the UFOs, which even the government has admitted to finding UFOs, UFOs just means unidentified flying objects, of course. They don't necessarily have to be inhabited by aliens, but um, there have been some very weird reports from like military personnel encountering um, UFOs and then like vanishing, like certain planes in the Air Force, radioing in certain things and then vanishing. And so I find those stories intriguing because it's almost like approaching these beings puts you inside of like a time warp or like 
it opens the doorway to another dimension. And that's what's terrifying. This also ties into like tarot readings, necromancy, all of these things that Christians are told to stay away from for good reason. Because a lot of the things that humans get into that they consider the occult or paranormal, like witchcraft, all these things are, we're told in the Christian world, are powered by demons. So, um, like tarot readings, if you're a tarot reader or you're watching tarot readings, I would recommend you stop because it's said to be opening doorways. If you're um, going to see psychics, you need to stop. If you're letting psychics read you, you need to stop. If people are reading you without your permission, then you need to tell them to stop because all of this helps to open doorways with the spirit realm in a negative way. That's what my Christian belief is. So when it comes to aliens, I think they are just spiritual beings that are hopping over from other dimensions and wreaking havoc. That may account for why they can't be captured on film because there are no real sightings of aliens, but there are so many stories that explain bizarre happenings. And I don't think all these people are lying or that all these people are obsessed with furthering a conspiracy theory. I think some of these people have legitimate encounters with alien beings, but they don't realize they're just encountering a demonic force. It's just really creepy to me. One of the movies I saw that creeped me the fuck out about aliens and made me see them as just demons was um, Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind, I believe. And Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind, I believe, are abductions by aliens. And that movie was just terrifying to me. I don't recommend you watching it, but it's fictional, but it does put it into perspective that aliens are just demons. The Diddy allegations and 50 Cent's reaction. Uh, 50 Cent is just a troll, it seems. He was apparently trolling Diddy before the allegations came out. He apparently has a long storied history of just trolling Diddy for some reason. They must have a feud or something. These Diddy allegations are insane. And I'm like the biggest dork alive. I'm so out of touch with the world of hip hop and always have been. But everyone around me, including my brothers, were always into it. I was just always the anomaly in my neighborhood. So even though I'm not a huge fan of hip hop, I'm always, always intrigued and totally here for predatory men being brought low. It's so satisfying to watch. It fuels my soul because they just, they're so tyrannical. In their own little world, men find a way to be so tyrannical and so oppressive and they're so pathetic. So many of them follow the same patterns and especially if they gain even an iota of power, they become so ruthless and heartless and arrogant and thinking they're invincible. So it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing to see these sorts of men brought low. And Diddy was one who was long overdue for a downfall. And I typically don't like to make broad generalizations about any group of people because it's discriminatory and prejudice, but the science is in and the data is settled. Men are pigs. When it comes to women, men are pigs. They're swine. Almost all men, almost. They're great in so many other ways, which is why I love men and why a lot of my role models and my biggest creative mentors have mostly been men. But when it comes to women, men are awful. And this has been the case since the dawn of time. And it took a lot for me to come to that conclusion. I had moments in my life where I kid you not, I hated men. I hated male authority. I rebelled against it at every possible chance. I regularly got into verbal altercations with so many male teachers when I was in high school. There was basically two ways I approached male teachers. I either fell in love with them or I hated them with everything I was. And it took some maturing and some contemplation to realize why that was. A lot of our worldview and our perceptions and a huge part of our socializing starts at home. And my dad is by far the reason I hate it and continue to distrust men. But that's a subject for another day. Yeah, major daddy issues over here. But back on topic. I remember when I was much younger, when Cassie first came out, everybody was obsessed with her. She was gorgeous. Something about her look and her style and her sound was very fresh. And around that time, she shook up things majorly. I just remember being so impressed by her and thinking she was hot as hell. So 
Recently, Cassie, whose full name is Cassandra Ventura. So Cassie was like blown up by Diddy in the past. And then they dated for about 10 years, I believe. And they broke up and she's married to someone new. But she recently brought out a bombshell lawsuit against Diddy in which she alleges she was subjected to brutal DV multiple times. She also alleged that he essayed her when she tried to leave him. And the things she describes in this lawsuit is very typical behavior for this sort of predatory they're predatory because they they know how to prey on vulnerable women and they kind of follow the same tactics and they intimidate the victims into remaining by way of force or coercion or threats or other fear inducing tactics even worse she also accused him of human trafficking meaning he forced her to sleep with other men or more appropriately he allowed other men to essay her she also claims he coerced her into a substance fueled lifestyle that left her addled by addiction for years of course diddy and his team vehemently denied the allegations and they called the lawsuit baseless, but ultimately to no avail. They eventually reached a settlement in this lawsuit for an undisclosed amount. And some may say by his eagerness to settle, having settled within 24 hours of the lawsuit being publicized, some might suggest that this was an admission of guilt. Diddy is now facing three other lawsuits from three additional victims who are inspired by Cassie to come forward. The dam has officially broken on this creep and he's been accused for years of doing some horrendous things to other musicians, both sexually and screwing them over financially. And of course, the things he was doing to women for years, including his former wife, Kim Porter, who died suspiciously in her sleep on November 15th, 2018, at the age of 47. It was reported by a Los Angeles County medical examiner that she passed away from a quote unquote lung infection. And about a week before she passed away, she complained of a sore throat, which developed into a fever of 102 degrees. Sounds a bit odd if you ask me. But of the three other lawsuits filed against Diddy, which were inspired by Cassie's lawsuit, one was a Syracuse University college student who was apparently drugged after going out with Diddy. She claimed she was essayed in New York in 1991. She also claimed the incident was recorded as a form of revenge porn to keep her quiet, which is just diabolical and lends credence to the notion that the abuse among Diddy and his crew was systemic since it was alleged that they drugged and date girls regularly. And the latest lawsuit that was publicized is another huge one. The victim alleges that she was only 17 years old when this incident took place. She was flown from a Detroit lounge in Michigan to New York where she was drugged and gang in a recording studio with Diddy and his crew. She also allegedly provided pictures of herself sitting on Diddy's lap and other instances of her engaging with him that day and mind you, she was still a minor. When it was all over, she claims they drove her back to the airport to send her back to Michigan. So amid all these lawsuits, Diddy stepped down from his position as chairman in the film and television company called Revolt. So I suppose we'll see where these other lawsuits land. Um, we'll see if he settles the rest of them. I think that'll be quite telling. And regardless of everything, I know he's innocent till proven guilty, but the verdict is kind of in on Diddy. It has been for many, many years. So I would be interested to see if any more lawsuits come forward and if any more damning evidence is finally revealed. Because the reason he settled with Cassie so rapidly was because he wanted to do it before the discovery phase of the lawsuit took place. Because I believe they know she has some really damning evidence on Diddy. So she's done what she believes was the amicable thing by settling it, but the world would have benefited from her providing that evidence. And I hope one day she still does.